Hey friends, welcome to this Ohio farmhouse. For those of you that are new, I just wanna welcome you. But it is fall and my goodness, I feel like it's just slipping away from me right now. I'm watching the leaves just steadily fall from the trees and I know that in just a short amount of time, it's gonna be bare. And so I'm really just trying to embrace the rest of the season here. And so I wanted to make for you today some pumpkin cookies. And these are like a pumpkin chocolate chip cookie that can be made with either normal chocolate chips or some dark chocolate, or you could even put white chocolate chips in like I'm going to do today. We know what we have, let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life. Call us crazy, but things are finally right. The future is bright. We made these a couple of times already over the weekend and they just disappear really quickly because they're so good. They almost have this crispness to the outside of them, but then the inside is just really soft and gooey and so good. The kids have, oh my goodness, devoured these things and my oldest has declared them as probably his favorite cookie. So. I wanted to share these with you, just kind of embracing the last bit of fall here before all of our leaves are gone for the season. It always goes so much more quickly than what I'm ready for. Okay, so you want to start out with some room temperature butter. This part is really important. If you put cold butter in here, it's not going to work the way you want it to. And you definitely don't want it melty because that ruins the consistency. So room temperature, it's been sitting out and it's just warm, but not melty. I'm gonna throw that in and start getting that whipped up really good. Now this recipe has far more sugar than what I normally allow into a sweet treat and we've had it more times than I would like to admit just recently but we have to share them with you, so I guess we're gonna have to make them one more time. So you're gonna go ahead and put in a full cup of brown sugar. And you're gonna press it in, so that makes even more sugar. And then it's a little bit less white sugar, so just a half of a cup of the white sugar. I actually don't have any on hand, otherwise I would absolutely be using it right now. But the brown sugar can easily be substituted with coconut sugar, which really has a lower glycemic index, so it doesn't spike your blood sugar and it kind of th keeps things much more steady. Um, I don't have any, I thought that I did, otherwise I would be throwing that in here in, the pl in place of the brown sugar. Um, but for today, we're sticking to what we have. After a really kind of, not kind of, a very frustrating homeschool day with the kids, I escaped and uh, kind of hid from them. They didn't know where I was and said they were looking for me forever. But really it was probably only about 15 or 20 minutes. But I escaped to the hammock in the side yard and just laid there and stared up at all of the fall trees and the leaves that were falling. It was quite peaceful, just kind of watching them all come down um, helped me to recover from my frustrating, frustrating children today. Really, it was just two of them that made today a little bit extra trying, and it seems to be that those two strike frequently. <laughs> okay, I'm going to just give this another good stir here. This is just my butter and sugar, just getting those all whipped together. So to this, I'm just gonna add a teaspoon of baking soda, a teaspoon of salt, and then two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. Now this recipe doesn't have any actual pumpkin puree in it. Normally when I do recipes, I like to put that extra pumpkin puree in because it is really healthy. It's a nice added nutrient, but that makes it very pumpkin-y. And so today, this uh, the pumpkin pie spice that I'm putting in here gives it a much more subtle flavor. It's pumpkin-y, but not so extreme that somebody who doesn't necessarily love pumpkin, they're, they're still going to enjoy this cookie. Okay, and then 
I need three cups of flour. It looks like I'm going to have to refill my flour container. So probably like all of you, we've been doing all the fall things that we can muster into our schedule. Squeeze in there, but we've been to the corn mazes and the pumpkin patch and we've um, we're doing a harvest party this weekend. We had one last weekend. And so we're just trying to jam pack all of these things in. In the comments below, tell me what you guys do in the fall that might be a little bit different. We're always looking for fun, unique things to do. And we've been doing the exact same things for years, which are great and they're fun, but it's always fun to try something new. I'm gonna crack my eggs. You need two eggs for this recipe, but I'm gonna crack them into a bowl first. I have learned my lesson the hard way, um, whoops, with farm fresh eggs that you just don't wanna go down that road and ruin all of your batter. I actually broke my own rule the other day and cracked an egg directly into some sourdough. <laughs> that I was making and it completely ruined the batch. And I had some really unhappy kids because I didn't have enough discard to make another recipe. And so they just had to wait until that could be built back up. And so they were a little bit frustrated <laughs> with me. So put them in the bowl first, test them out and make sure that they're nice and fresh. You can test them by floating them as well. And if they sink to the bottom, then they're nice and fresh you don't want to use an egg that floats to the top. And so these were tested that way, but just as extra assurance, I wanted to crack them in the bowl. The last thing I need to put in here is just a couple of teaspoons of vanilla. Go ahead and get that all stirred up and incorporated. So, this is why this cookie dough is one of my favorites. Not only does it taste really, really yummy, but it sticks together and doesn't get all over your hands. It's guaranteed that I have multiple children in the kitchen baking alongside of me and they inevitably want to fill the trays with the cookie dough. The best thing about this cookie dough is that they can legit get just a ball or a scoop of it and throw it down on there and it is the cleanest cookie dough I have ever worked with. Normally I've got goopy spoons and they're trying to get it off and it's all over their hands and it's just yuck. And so I love that this just makes this really nice clean ball and there's nothing on my hands afterwards other than just a little bit of butter that I need to rinse off. So this is all incorporated. I'm gonna go ahead and add my chocolate chips to this and then we're gonna put them on a tray and get them baking. I've got kids who are outside. I can see them through the window right behind me here. They are out busily jumping on the trampoline and filling the trampoline with leaves and loving this last bit of warm weather. And I'm gonna call them in for some warm cookies.
the kids are all inside and enjoying their cookies. I hope that you guys are having an awesome fall and getting outside and enjoying the beautiful weather. I'll see you next time on This Ohio Farmhouse. Thanks for being here.